Welcome back guys. It has been a long weekend of fabrication, but as I'm sure you guys can tell, I'm in a fantastic mood because that engine is officially mounted in the car. It is a K-swap Ferrari now. It, if the car moves, the engine goes with it. This is a huge milestone. I've been working towards this for months at this point, and this weekend I finally figured out a game plan. I decided what I wanted to do, and I put in the hours. I tried to I changed up the way that I'm filming. I've got lots of GoPro footage this time around, uh, lots of chest cam stuff, I've got some time lapses. So let me know what you think of how I shot this episode and if you feel like it was cohesive and worked out. And if you guys do like this episode or if you're just now finding this channel, please do comment, like, or subscribe. That stuff does a ton for me as a content creator and helps this channel grow. And for those of you that are regulars, if you're looking for another way to support the channel, I have put together a Patreon page and the link is in the description. Last but not least, there are Stancework shirts and hats on the way. I'll have an update for you guys later on that, but the ball is rolling on it, which I'm stoked for. You guys have been asking for that. Back to the engine swap. Let's jump over to the car, and I'll show you guys what I've gotten done, and then we'll go over how I got there. So as mentioned, the K24 is officially mounted in the car. It's hanging by its own weight. We've got three engine mounts done at this point. I've got one at each end of the engine. So we've got this major transmission mount right here, which has got a bushing on each end. And then we've got a kind of a, not a similar mount, but another bushing mount kind of hanging out on this side of the motor from our diagonal tube that we put in in a previous episode. And then our third mount at the moment is kind of buried down here. And this is to keep the engine from torquing. It also pro provides a lot of support. <laughs> There are some more mounts that we're going to add to it at minimum. I'm going to add one more to this ear of the transmission. There's a factory mount that goes here and this will add a lot more kind of torsional support. And then once I get the dry sump system and the, uh, the pump more specifically mounted to the motor, I'd like to get a mount on the back side of the engine down to this other cross member, but I've got to get some parts before I know what's going to clear and what's going to work. So we're making good progress there. As said, I'm really pleased with the engine in place. We're not really gonna find a whole lot more uh, kind of interference with things. So we can start moving forward on, you know, building the turbo system, getting all the plumbing done. We can put a fuel cell on the car, all that kind of stuff. So this is a huge milestone. I, I apologize, I'm probably carrying on already. I am excited. This is fantastic. Now, as far as how we got here, there is a bit of a learning curve on my end. As I said, I changed up how I filmed. I got lots of GoPro stuff, and part of that learning curve is I deleted the first like several hours of progress. So we're diving right part way into making that bottom lower mount on the back of the engine. I'll catch you guys up to speed, but here we go. So we're joining in and I'm about halfway through building a bracket that's going to attach to the bottom of the transmission. And a hemispherical cut in this bracket is going to attach to a bushing housing and we're going to use that to isolate things. I've decided not to solid mount this engine and we'll touch more upon that a bit later. Using a hole saw and plate steel never really works so I'm cutting this cut out the old fashioned way with a grinder and a cutoff wheel. It turns out that drawing a face on your bracket doesn't help you line up your center punch holes, but with these spots in place it makes it easy to drill these holes out exactly where I want them. I'm using an eighth inch drill bit for pilot holes and then a step bit and some cutting lubricant to enlarge them out to fit the 14 millimeter bolts that will then bolt to the transmission. Now the other side of the bushing is going to need a bracket to hold it and a base plate to mount that bracket to the chassis. So we're starting with a base plate that'll give us something to build up from. Here I'm using eighth inch plate steel and then kind of grinding out a shape, marking some radius corners on it and then building it out to shape for a nice finished looking product.
I snagged this belt sander since the last episode after hunting on Craigslist for kind of a more industrial one. I just went to Home Depot and bought this Ryobi one. It was like 150 bucks, and honestly, so far, it's done the trick a lot better than I expected. So if you're looking for a cheap solution like mine, there you go. With the part all cleaned up, I folded it over 90 degrees on one side in my big sheet metal break. And that's to make the plate a bit stronger and to give it a bit more kind of surface area to mount to the chassis with. It'll make it a bit easier on my end. I then went over to CAD and I drew up my bushing assembly and then drew up the bracket that you see here. And this is just to give me something to hold the bushing. The nice part about drawing this in CAD is that I can then take it and flatten it out in the software. And then with that flat pattern, I can print it out and use this kind of printed out on paper and glued to sheet metal like you see here to cut out a perfect one-to-one -one replica of the part in real life without having to have something like a CNC plasma cutter or a water jet table. With the part cut out, it's a little bit more of the same. I've got to clip the corners off, round them on the belt sander, uh, before doing anything, I like to go on and center punch my holes just in case my paper gets disrupted. I have had my paper, you know, once it's glued down, come off, and that kind of ruins the part if you don't have reference marks. If you're looking for a tip for radiusing corners, let the belt sander do the work and just take your time, and they'll come out nice and clean. With that done, I'm taking all of the parts and assembling them on the car so that I can start tack welding pieces together so that nothing moves and I can weld them on the bench. Here's kind of a glimpse at how this part actually works. You can see it mounted to the transmission and to the chassis. Over on the bench, it's just a matter of TIG welding these parts together. And I have to say I'm getting a lot more comfortable and confident having TIG welded all weekend. Some of these first parts didn't come out amazing, but by the end of the weekend I really felt like I had a groove going and I'm excited to keep welding. I'm really enjoying the TIG welding process quite a lot to be honest. So this one engine mount completely done. All that's left is just to weld it to the chassis and I'm gonna be patient before I do that, make sure I've got some of the other stuff done before I fully lock it into place. But I'm happy with how it came out. I like the solution that I've put together. I think it will be very strong while also working really well to kind of help isolate some of the vibrations and whatnot from the engine. I've been told by a lot of really reliable sources that that's one problem I'm gonna face with a Honda engine like this is when you are high revving them and especially when you have them solid mounted or mounted with like really hard poly bushings, they tend to vibrate everything loose and so I'm working to kind of mitigate that. I did want a solution though that I could come back and change the bushings out whether I wanna do rubber, poly, or solid aluminum and the simplest way to get there was to use something like this. So I think this is gonna work. We'll, uh, we'll put it back in the car here shortly, but it's time to move on to the next mount, which is gonna be the mount that crosses over the top of the transmission. I spent, at this point, hours and hours and hours looking at this thing, trying to figure something out that I liked, something that I felt was elegant, and honestly, I'm still not even fully sold on what I've landed on, but I think it's the best solution given how odd the mount for the transmission is. It's a tr mount on top of a transmission. It's not very typical. So I'm gonna build kind of a, a support structure that crosses over the top of it and is isolated on each end with a bushing so it's removable. And so that that way I can take this whole structure out of the car and not have it keep the engine from coming out. So we gotta build it. I've already made a handful of these kind of tube bungs, at least that's what I call them. Uh, some washers welded to the end of some tubes. These are gonna connect to the transmission and I've gone and flattened them back out so that they will sit nice and flush on top of it. We're gonna take these, start attaching some tubes to them, build some, uh, some structure for some bushings and hopefully before too long, after one really crafty cope, if it goes well, we will have a second mount done. Let's build it. So as said, I started this out by building these two bungs that will attach to the transmission itself. 
Now, what's going to attach to these is a series of tubes to create a structure that will suspend the transmission, kind of like an upside down transmission cross brace in a normal car. This tube here is bent 90 degrees and it's gonna be the first tube we're gonna use for this part of the project. We're gonna attach it to one of those tube bungs and then go on and bolt it to the car so we can start mocking the rest of things up. Now, I did mention a crazy cope a minute ago, and honestly, this isn't that wild, but what I want to do is halfway intersect one tube with another, and that's because the bolt holes on top of the transmission are not in line with each other. They are kind of weirdly spaced out, and there's not really a rhythm or method to the madness, so to speak. You can kind of see here the shape of what I'm going for, and I've decided to cope this tube by hand. I don't think putting it in the notcher is worthwhile. I think it's more likely to mess up if I don't have my placement absolutely perfect. So I'm just buzzing it until it fits. And here you can see the two tubes in place in the car. And I'm happy to say that it does fit pretty well. I really wanted the base tube itself to be kind of perfectly perpendicular with the car or parallel with the chassis rails instead of angling to meet, you know, from one tube bung to the other. And I think this overall aesthetic decision will make it look a little bit better and it'll make it look unique. It's otherwise a pretty uninteresting part. So now we've got to weld them together. I was relatively slow on this process as I didn't want to warp anything and I did actually take the piece and check fitment a couple of times as I did this just to make sure I didn't mess this part up. I didn't want to make this more than once. After that, I took the CAD drawing I showed you earlier and cut out another bracket for another bushing. This one's going to get mounted kind of towards the back of the car. You can see where I want to put it right here, and there's kind of an odd hole in the chassis from the way Ferrari built it. I wasn't sure what to do about it, so I've decided to cap over it with some eighth inch plate, one to reinforce things a bit, and two just to not have to deal with this hole. Welding this plate in was not fun, but I feel happy with the solution. And here you can see the actual bushing tab in place. Now I did skip a bit since that last clip, I fabbed some off camera, but this arm that you see here is what's going to extend back to that bushing mount. And here it is all welded up and in place. You can see this bracket as a whole starting to take shape. Now on the other end, we do need to put another bushing situated on top of the chassis itself. Now, my solution for this was to take that CAD drawing of that bushing bracket one more time and modify it so it did not have a back end, and then I bent it up in the brake so it fit the chassis and offset the bushing in the correct direction so that this would work properly. With it welded into place, it was just a matter of coping the tube, and here you can see a finished and complete transmission mount. All right, so that transmission mount is in place. I bolted it in and when I tightened it down the bolts to the transmission, it picked it up off the jack by about an eighth inch, which means it's working. It's supporting its own weight, even with the chassis sides of those mounts just kind of tacked into place or lightly welded on, which I'm happy with. That means that mount is done and it works. It means we need to jump over to the cylinder head mount on the opposite side of the engine. It's the last mount that we need to make in order to actually hang this engine from its own weight. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what to do here, but I think I've got a game plan. I'll explain it while I get underway. Let's go. I'm using more 3 16 inch plate, which is the same material we used on the bottom transmission mount. Now, what I'm using here is based off the paper template we made of the cylinder head many episodes ago. So the plate that I'm making now will use all four bolt provisions in the cylinder head to support the engine. And we're gonna build off of this plate with a tube and attach that to a bushing. The bushing itself is going to be held by another bushing bracket, but this one is a bit different than the others. I modified it so that it will account for the sloped tube in the engine bay and for a bigger, heavier duty bushing on this one side of the engine. You can see the finished plate here and next to it, the assembled bushing bracket.
I know that the montage for this last mount on your end was definitely not exciting because I didn't record very much of it, largely because the entire second half of the process took place in the fender well. Couldn't fit a camera in there to see what I was doing and I could barely see what I was doing because that box mount that I made blocked my whole view. But I just took a little piece of tube that looks just like this one right here. This one actually didn't fit, but made one of these guys and bridged from our plate to our bushing. Welded it up and I'm happy to say I just pulled the jack out. The engine's sitting on his own weight. It is a very, very rewarding moment. I guess that means it is technically a K-swapped Ferrari at this point. It's not just hanging out. It is mounted to the car. It is bolted to it. I can roll this thing around again. All right, guys, this episode is a wrap. That is an engine mounted, and I'm in a great mood. This is fantastic. I'm having a blast. Finally, some good progress. It's what I needed around here. It is a, a good morale booster. Let me know what you guys think of this episode. As mentioned, I changed it up a little bit. I want to know if this recipe worked. I hope that you guys liked the level of detail. I hope it didn't drag on at all, but there was a lot of ground to cover, and I wanted to show a little bit of everything. Hopefully, we hit the mark. I think in the next episode, I want to build that upper engine mount that goes to the transmission, and I was thinking of showing you guys kind of really step-by-step -step each process from drawing some stuff up in CAD, cutting out those templates, and transforming it into a finished steel part that we will then weld to the car. Let me know if that's what you guys wanna see. But in any case, I wanna thank you guys for watching along. I'm having fun making these videos and I'm just thrilled that there are folks like you guys out there that are watching and participating. I read every comment that you guys leave and I'm just glad to have people involved. I will catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you again for the support.